Hello, everyone. Welcome to Literary Animator, a place where you study, we animate. Today, we'll be exploring one of William Shakespeare's most famous sonnets, Sonnet 18, also known as Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? William Shakespeare, born in 1564, is one of the most celebrated poets and playwrights in English literature. He wrote 154 sonnets, and Sonnet 18 is perhaps the most well-known and beloved. This sonnet is part of the Fair Youth sequence, where Shakespeare addresses a young man of great beauty and worth. Before we dive deeper into Sonnet 18, it's important to understand the structure of a Shakespearean sonnet. This knowledge will help us appreciate the craftsmanship behind Shakespeare's poetry. A Shakespearean sonnet, also known as an Elizabethan or English sonnet, consists of 14 lines. These lines are divided into three quatrains, which are groups of four lines, followed by a final rhymed couplet. The rhyme scheme follows a specific pattern, ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG. This should be enough for now. I'll create a separate lecture for Shakespearean sonnets soon. Let's begin by breaking down the poem, stanza by stanza, to understand its key ideas and imagery. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. In the opening lines, the speaker contemplates whether to compare the beloved to a summer day. Immediately, he decides that the beloved is more lovely and more temperate. Temperate here means moderate and gentle, suggesting a calm beauty that surpasses the sometimes harsh qualities of summer. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May and summer's lease have all too short a date. Shakespeare points out that summer is not perfect. Rough winds can shake the delicate buds of May, and summer itself is fleeting, with its lease being all too short. The metaphor of a lease suggests that summer is temporary, like a rental agreement that soon comes to an end. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed. The eye of heaven refers to the sun, which can sometimes be too hot. The sun's gold complexion can also be dimmed by clouds or other weather changes. This imagery highlights the variability and imperfection of a summer's day. And every fair from fair sometime declines. By chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. Shakespeare notes that all beautiful things eventually lose their beauty, whether by chance or the natural passage of time. The phrase, every fair from fair sometime declines, emphasizes the inevitability of decline and decay but thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. However, the speaker asserts that the beloved's beauty is eternal and will not fade like a summer day. The beloved will not lose their beauty, which is a stark contrast to the temporary nature of summer. Nor shall death brag thou wanderst in a shade, when in eternal lines to time thou grow'st. Death will not claim the beloved or boast that the beloved is in its power. The beloved will achieve immortality through the eternal lines of the sonnet, meaning the poem itself will preserve their beauty forever. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this.
and this gives life to thee. In the final couplet, Shakespeare concludes that as long as people live and can read, the poem will endure. This poem immortalizes the beloved, giving them eternal life through its verses. So, what is the overall emotional impact of Sonnet 18? Shakespeare celebrates the eternal beauty of the beloved and the power of poetry to immortalize that beauty. The poem moves from the imperfections and fleeting nature of a summer's day to the perfect and enduring beauty of the beloved, creating a sense of awe and admiration. Thank you for joining me in this exploration of Shakespeare's Sonnet 18. I hope this analysis has given you a deeper understanding and appreciation of this timeless poem, and if you enjoyed this exploration, consider subscribing for more in-depth dives into classic poems.